Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Oh, that's delicious. <sighs> All right. Today is, say it with me, Friday, whoop, whoop, whoop. November 18th. Uh, week before American Thanksgiving. So um, I will be here next week on Monday, probably Tuesday, and then like knocked, not for um, until December 5th, I think. Because uh, I don't think I'll podcast from Writing Retreat. So I still haven't asked anyone about social media because I decided that's dumb. It's like if I post, I post. Um, family and friends, of course, will hear from me, but I might just um, kind of going back to the writing retreat thing, right? When I was talking about this the other day that one of the people I'm going with, the person who's sponsoring it, asked how it felt to me to go on writing retreat because for them, this was like an escape from their lives. This was like 40 hours that they would otherwise not get to write in their normal lives. But for me, my normal life is writing. So what is writing retreat for me? And it's, it's a good question. And I already talked about some of my angst about how, if I'm like out of my writing routine that it, um, that I, I freak out about <laughs> not being able to write. Uh, it is the downside of building the writing habit is that the writing habit, um, carries you through, but then if circumstances aren't right for the habit, you worry that uh, things won't go the way you want them to. Um, and it's turning out to be a low word count year for me, and I'm not sure what that indicates. Um, it could be the impact of being so far president. Um, we were all hoping that because I am already so well entrenched in what I do, that that would not have an impact but it may have. I mean, it's not, I mean, these things are relative, right? You know, we talk about, you know, do you lose a book a year to being president? And at this point, I am on track to match, well, my, my lowest year was 2019 when I wrote a little shy of 378,000 words in 2019. Um, and there were reasons for that. One of which was that I took off an entire month really <laughs> um, to travel through Ireland and did not write for like the entire month of August and not a lot of July too. And in retrospect, I'm glad because that was like pre pandemic. So at this point, so far this year, I have written 328,000. So I'm on target to write like 358,000 if I consider continue the current trend, which would be less than 2019. Um, the next sort of tier of, of words is like around 436, 438. Um, 437, uh, that, that was 2016, 2018, and 2021. So I probably, maybe I will exceed 2019, but I will probably not get up as high as those years. And is that good or bad? I don't know. Um, if you've been listening to me a while, you know I was talking about some of this is gathering data as in observing yourself um, like a field scientist, seeing what you do. I definitely ramped down in my word count expectations and I've felt less mentally exhausted. So that's a thing. Um, but also my, my publishing output put has been good. So I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I shouldn't worry about it too much um, because uh, it's still 
even if I end up somewhere around 350,000, 370,000 words for this year, that's pretty decent, right? So anyway, I have been thinking about that. What does writing retreat mean for me? And I think some of that will mean, um, you know, like staying away from SIPWA stuff, staying away from social media, um, not worrying about the podcast, and just thinking about the book all the time, which is actually how this got started because I was talking with this friend at Worldcon um, who was telling me that he does like these regular writing retreats where he just goes away and, and he's an aspiring writer, but he just goes away and, you know, just to get that mental space. And I was saying, you know, how much it's, you know, that I want to do that. I'm like, oh, I always want to do that just to be able to not worry about things for a little while. And, um, <laughs> you know, just be only thinking about the book. So maybe that's what I can do. So, so in a way, that's like a vacation, right? It's um, the per point of the writing retreat thing. And I'm going to be in a really beautiful place. I know I keep teasing about that, but it's, it's not my deal. So I don't feel like I can say, but I get to be by a beach. So yeah, I think I will just allow it to be like the big unwind and not freak about numbers, except that I will keep track because I am who I am. Wherever you go, there you are. So um, the novella is done. The Long Night of the Radiant Star is complete. Woohoo! I sent it off yesterday to the formatter, finished the out loud proofing, sent it to the formatter. My proofing took a little bit longer than usual because I did do a little bit more tweaking as I went. But yeah, that's sent off. Um, this weekend, I am going to, oh, and it's, sorry, stay on topic for a moment. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to fidgety me today. I have to pick up something to fidget with. Also, I wanted to write something now. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, it's up for pre-order on the website. So if you want to get it from the website, you can do that. Um, you just have to be able to sideload if you know how to do that. If you don't know how, Corrine can help you. Um, there's lots of ways to reach her. The web form works. Uh, but um, otherwise, I will probably get it all uploaded on Sunday and to the retail sites, and I will be posting links to that. So... So yeah, I hope you all enjoy this. I think it's really fun. I got a lovely note from one of the beta readers and I will um, tell you what she said because she had sent me um, comments, you know, before, but then she sent me a follow-up yesterday morning and she says, I woke up this morning smiling while thinking about Jack and Stella. No questions about why this happened or that happened, didn't happen, or a plot line that didn't make sense. I sometimes struggle with that with other authors. All good and very well written. I'm still envisioning the castle all decorated. So, boom, score. That makes me very happy. Uh, so, thank you. I didn't say your name because I didn't know if you wanted me to. So, um, so yeah, that that's going. Um, and then this weekend I will start queuing up the facets of passions books and set, I think I'll set, um, five golden release, bleh, 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 five golden rings to release, uh, while I'm on writing retreat. I wonder if that's a bad idea. Well, I'll, I'll rethink that. Maybe I'll do it for black Friday. Is that a bad day? Eh, anyway, I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, oh, well, sorry. I keep thinking about what would be the best. I mean, the other choice is to wait till I'm back from retreat and that feels close to Christmas. So I don't know. Any opinions out there? Uh, anyway, I'll get those all queued up this week and get those back cover copy written and 
And today I start on the Bandits book. I am behind schedule. Um, not necessarily for delivering the Bandits draft to Agent Sarah, but looking forward to what I need to finish um, in order to meet the Rogue Familiar release date. Because I've realized I also, <laughs> I feel like Dorinda Jones, because um, she's doing this all the time. I was like, I forgot I promised to write a novella in between there because the um, novella that I'm, or novella, the anthology that I'm doing with Grace Draven, Dana Marton, and Maria Vale, um, The Waters on the Wild, is we decided that those novellas were due by the end of February. And I have my release date set for Rogue Familiar for February 23rd. So I'm hoping I haven't screwed myself here, but I decided yesterday I was looking after I finished and I was sort of going through and tying up my spreadsheets. I, I have a tab for each book that I'm working on. So when I finish, when I send a book off to the formatter, I, you know, like seal the dates. Cause I have some things where it's set for like today in Excel, you know, so I set, you know, finished on November 17th and I move things to different columns and I take that tab out of the workbook altogether and save it separately because it's no longer an active piece. It's a nice tying up. It's a nice finishing. So I got all of that stuff um, tied up and sent out. I was looking at my schedule and thinking, huh, I, I thought I gave myself a lot of room, but this novella took a silly amount of time and some of it was travel too. I think that's the other thing that I'm not calculating in is the resumption of travel, going to cons and so forth. So yeah, <laughs> we, we'll never say that we miss lockdown, but in some ways there was, you know, boy, 2021, that was a, a good writing year for me or 2020 was a good writing year for me. 2021 a little bit less so but uh yeah 2020 was right up there the best in quite some time so and also i have to face the fact that i did i change over time that i um you know wax and wane in my ability to produce a lot of words so um what was I thinking about with the schedule? I was looking at the schedule. Oh, I decided that I'm just going to concentrate on finishing this bandits book, getting this draft to Sarah. I'm, I'm going to try to write it really fast because I think that, and I probably need to touch base with Sarah on this, but I don't want to, I'm not going to write it like I would write something that I'm going to take out self publishing because there could be still a lot of revisions in my future on this book, right? Sarah might want changes. Then if we sell it to traditional publishing, uh, the editor might want one or more rounds of changes. So I am going to try to just slam this out there. There's also the, the added difference that I am doing this from the unnamed movie that I'm setting in a secondary fantasy world. I've decided to just go with secondary fantasy world as a term. I capitulate. It's kind of apropos of what I was saying yesterday with, you know, where we can, I feel like we should try to match each other in terminology in order to facilitate conversations with each other. And if most people think that secondary fantasy world is the correct thing to say, then that's what I'm going to say. Same way with me trying to take you guys out of my vocabulary, which I feel like I'm getting there. Have, have you noticed? I feel like I'm saying it much less than I used to. And I notice when other people say it, which is kind of funny. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I feel like we can be flexible and change. That's, that's really important. And language moves so, so much that, you know, we really don't have a choice there. Um, so, so yeah, I'm going to try to get that written out and, oh, I know what I was saying that the big difference is that this, um, that I already have the scene structure. So like this morning for the opening scene, I think I'm going to go look at that movie, which I bought, right. 
and look at that scene and try to write that first scene. And it's going to be a different way for me to work. So will it slow me down? Will it speed me up? I don't know. Uh, a lot of writers say that they feel like they write fastest when they, <clears throat> when they know what they're going to write that day, when they have it planned out ahead of time. And this is not my experience. Uh, but we all know that I'm not a pre-plotter, right? Because uh, <laughs> I can't. Because I cannot pre-plot. Uh, so in this case, the plot is already there. At least the plot structure. Um, there's a lot of differences within it, right? But I don't know. For me, scenes go fastest. Oh, don't. It's not when I know what's going to happen. Um, it's it's when it goes fast. <laughs> uh, there are just it's like when I'm in the zone when I'm really plugged in and it just flows in. So I'm hoping that um, because this is a story idea I've been nurturing for so long, uh, other people are excited about it. Kelly Robson messaged me this morning and said Happy Bandits Day, and so she's all excited for me to start this story. So, so yeah, we'll see. Um, it'll be interesting. Uh, the other thing that probably bears mentioning, um, just because it's kind of a seismic shift in our universe, is uh, whether or not Twitter will go down. Um, <laughs> I haven't, I don't think I've mentioned it on here much. A lot of people have been talking about it. I mentioned it with the whole thing of like going to newsletters. Uh, with Elon Musk buying Twitter uh, <laughs> and firing everyone who knows how to run Twitter, uh, it's been really fascinating to watch. It's, um, I think that in society, we have this idea that certain people, especially wealthy people, know what they're doing, that, that they have this deep agenda and diabolical plan, like the evil villain, right? Uh, that we believe that they are doing things in a ordered and, I don't know, smart way. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of the people who are rich, like Elon Musk and like Donald Trump, came from money in the first place, and they are insulated in certain ways that other people are not. It is not through their brilliance that they have become wealthy. And um, I think everybody thinks that Elon Musk thought <laughs> was going to pull some sort of brilliant plan out of his hat. And he clearly doesn't know what he's doing. Um, he was taking advice on how to run Twitter from like random people on Twitter and the internet. He was asking questions of people who were not the engineers at Twitter. Uh, it's it's just crazy. It's been crazy to watch. And now it's looking like because he has laid off almost the entire workforce that probably Twitter will stop working, <laughs> that it will collapse. And so it's been interesting watching people saying their goodbyes and so forth. I I haven't really. I'm And I'm sticking it out. You know, a lot of people have canceled their accounts and I think, well, why bother? Um, you know, I, I still want to be there and see what's going on. But yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he'll kill it or not, um, may, or if that was his plan to begin with. Um, maybe. I mean, if that was his plan, it's working. It, it does seem to be, you know, there's a lot of evidence that, you know, the, he's aligned himself with the alt-right, um, with Trump and with some of these others, with uh, some of the things that they've shown with like the suggested follows, you know, like if you follow Elon Musk, you also would enjoy following Donald Trump Jr., this sort of thing. So, um, yeah, uh, the free speech marketplace is looking to be a, um, a dusty ruin before much longer. It will be interesting to see, won't it? Uh, but we will find other ways to communicate with each other, right? I did think it was funny that Elon Musk tweeted 
apparently yesterday, I saw somebody else report this. I don't follow him, but he tweeted, um, how do you make a small fortune in social media start out with a large one, which <laughs> was like, oh yeah, you stole that joke from someone else. And it just like, I don't know, encapsulated the whole thing. So anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I hope that you are as productive as you want to be and relaxed as you want to be. And I will definitely talk to you all on Monday. And from there, we shall see. You all take care. Bye-bye.